this lesson is entitled periodic functions and the amplitude spectrum we're gonna go into deeper analysis of the Fourier series and really you know look at look at it in its entirety you know what does it take for us to you know expand x to the whole real line remember we have always been dealing with f is integrable from minus l to l but you know in today's lesson we see whether we can extend that rule now i know that it's a rule that, that comes from the definition but let's just extend it because you know i guess that was what joseph fire was doing so a certain uh, he saw a certain definition or he started with a certain definition and later he took it and explored the possibilities and let's see what we have so you know we just have to go through some uh, basic um, definitions and some basic rules of what periodic function is so f is said to be periodic if it is defined for all t and for some t um f T plus capital T, or for some capital T, um, F to uh, apply to F plus a certain capital T is equal to the F of T. Now you will know that a function like cosine x is periodic for two pi. So cosine x plus two pi is gonna be equals to cosine x. So you know that what periodic function means. Now if I were to show it to you on a graph, basically, if this distance from here to here is t. This, I would say that this function, if, if let's just call it as a function f of x, uh, is periodic for t. Well, basically, you know, what, that's what it means. You know, for a certain t or a certain period, which t is called a period, okay, for a certain period, the function just simply repeats itself, okay, and t. Now, you can also say that this distance, or let's just call it for t1, is also periodic. That, that is no, there's nothing wrong with that. That's perfectly correct. It's just that we're taking two of them. However, when we, when we define the smallest period, in this case is capital T, we call it the fundamental period, okay? Because, yeah, you know, it's the smallest one. And that's normally the one that's more important. So that's what a periodic function is. So now, we will go back into our definitions that we started uh, right to begin with. And, you know, that is to find the Fourier series of a certain function um, on minus L to L. So a, fun, a, a function of f on minus l to l, the following series is given by this thing over here. Okay, you all know that. But let's look at it and let's see what we can observe. Right, notice that the Fourier series, okay, we are able to take, think of a value of x to put inside there, right? So, I mean, assuming you do your convergence test, the function f of x is equal to this thing over here, and we are able to, you know, put a certain value of x inside here, and then, you know, we will get the Fourier series at that point. But x over here is right now it could be defined for the whole real line and i mean that would mean that you know from minus infinity to infinity the x the, the value of x that we choose to put inside the Fourier series but what did we start out with we started out with that the uh, function f is you know defined from minus l to l so in a way you know this suggests the idea right that we can use the Fourier series to define the whole of the function of f Okay, you know, I mean, that, that would make sense, right? You could use the Fourier series to define the whole function of f. So, let's just take it from the graph, okay? I will just erase this function f of x here because, you know, um, it's not supposed to be like that. So, function f of x is going to be given by this thing over here. Forget these two for now, okay? It's going to be given by this graph over here. Um, assuming, let's just assume that this is from minus l to l, so these are the points over here, right? But the Fourier series is defined for the whole real line. So, what the Fourier series suggests to us is that we can take that certain function and have what we call a periodic extension. A periodic extension of f of x. That is what it means. We are taking the Fourier series and using it to have a periodic extension of f of x, such as taking this over here, is the period is t, moving it here, 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 so on, and so forth. Okay? Now, in this case, functions in the Fourier series has the period of 2L. Yeah, we, we recognize that, okay? Actually, um, if you were to, if I were to, you know, do it better, it's gonna be so 2L like that. Why is it the period 2L? Well, basically, it's from minus L to L, so the period is 2L, okay? We wish to extend this idea to functions with the period of T. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna take the basis of knowing that the Fourier series is defined for the whole of the, the real line, and, you know, by using that, we can have the periodic extension of F. Uh, let me just draw your attention, draw your attention to something uh, quick. Now, you might be thinking, well, how can I just, you know, um, take it, you know, take a function and later, you know, just repeat itself? Well, basically because for this Fourier series, remember that when we have changed the variables from minus pi to pi to minus l to l, um, it was defined something like that, if you can still remember. T, it goes from uh, minus pi to pi. T goes from minus pi to pi, and x now goes from minus l to l. Well, if x goes from minus l to l, the period is now 2l. 
And you know, that, that would mean that the, the co functions, which is the cosine and the sine function, the period is now 2L because we have solved the variables, which is what we did. So the period of the Fourier series obviously matches with the period of the function. That is why we are at liberty to do the periodic extension. Okay? Uh, let's move on to generalize when the period C. So we have a certain function G, you know, just to uh, distinguish between the two, has a period of T. And now we expand G in the Fourier series of minus 2, uh, T, uh, minus t divided by 2 and t divided by 2. Why? Because now the period is t. Okay, so remember, um, this goes from 0, right? And it's basically, if the period is t, we need to, you know, take from minus t divided by 2 to t divided by 2. Okay, and, you know, this is what we have. For us, is given by this, and the Fourier coefficients, a, um, a0, a, n, b, n is given by this over here. This is simply very easy to get. What we do is that we just simply substitute t divided by 2 with l. And g is a period, period of t. So, you know, if I was to write it, in a in an equation, g is gonna be equals like this. So and the graph, you know, we will have the graph, okay? And let's just say t would be this is minus t divided by two, this is t divided by two, okay? And you know the graph, let's just say, goes something like that. Okay? Now if it has a period of t, okay, meaning to say that it has a periodic extension, we have already defined g to be you know a periodic function. Now g is a periodic function. Previously, I told you that we used the Fourier series to get the periodic extension of f. So now we're working the other way. When we start out with a periodic function of g, okay, with the period of t, uh, which if I want to illustrate, basically goes like that. See? Okay, and goes like this over here. So this is the function of g, and it, and it goes on forever. We can, the Fourier series of this function is now given by this one over here, okay? The Fourier series over here. Why? Because now, you know, it's consistent. X is defined for the whole real line. So, you know, th th that is what it means there, okay? Now, I would also like to say that notice that the, the terms in front of the Fourier coefficient, or sorry, in front of the integral sign has changed a bit. Okay, you will compare this to minus 2L, you will compare this to minus L, and you will compare this to minus L, okay? Now, instead, it's 2 divided by T, 2 divided by T, and 1 divided by T. This is not, and I say again, this is not using the property of an even function. You might be confused by what I'm saying. Now, remember, if we integrate an even function, we can integrate from 0 to L, bring the 2 outside. Now, if you see a 2 outside here, you might be thinking, oh my goodness, we're integrating an, an even function. But that is not the case. This comes from substituting L with T divided by 2. It has nothing, and I say again, absolutely nothing with an even function. Yes, this may very well be an even function, at which point you can multiply the 2 outside again, this one becomes 4. But don't be deceived, this 2 divided by L is not based on the property of an even function, it's based on the property of substituting L with T divided by 2, okay? So, I mean, the point is that this periodic function, um, G plus the, the period, period capital T, can be represented by this Fourier series over here, like so. Now, lastly, before I, I wrap up, I would also like to say that we are still at liberty to change the limits of the integral and I'm going to show it without proof right now. I will just subtract these integrals away, these limits away, okay? And I'll change it to a, a plus capital T, a, a plus capital T, and a plus a, uh, a plus capital T. Now, I'm not going to show without proof. I'm going to do that, you know, in a subsequent lesson. What does that mean? Well, this means that, you know, um, this is the period T, right? If we were to integrate this whole thing over here, we would get a certain number. The number would be the same if I were to integrate from, you know, T, the period T, by another portion of the graph. Okay? That, that is just simply rules of calculus. It's not that difficult to show, but, you know, you just take my word for it, okay? So, you can just find a convenient spot. Why is that useful? Well, basically, it's useful because some convenience spots will be like integrating from 0 to 3. You may not want to be integrating from um, minus 1.5 to 1.5. You can integrate from 0 to 3. So that simplifies the algebra a bit. Okay? Last but not least, there's another way to write the, the Fourier series of a periodic function, okay? which is gt is given by a0. This one stays the same. You take the summation, n equals to 1 um, to infinity of a certain cn, okay? and then it will be cosine n omega is not, okay, plus um, this thing over here, delta n. Okay, let's just uh, define a few things right now. Okay, cn is going to be equal to the square root of an squared plus bn squared. Now, this um, a and bn is exactly the same as the ones over there. Okay, the delta n is going to be equal to inverse tangent minus bn um, divided by an. It's the same thing over there. Okay, and the uh, n uh, omega t is basically just given by n 2 pi divided by L. We're just uh, putting the omega t inside of there. Well, what are all these terms called? Well, this is called the um, harmonic amplitude, I think. Hey, wait, wait, sorry. This is called the... Yeah, okay. 
This is okay. This this one is called the harmonic amplitudes. Okay, with an S. Okay, this one is called the phase angles. Again, with an S, and this is called the angular uh, frequency. You will see this in uh, simple harmonic motion, okay? But uh, basically, a uh, W naught term or uh, omega term, right, is always like 2 pi divided by T, is the angular frequency. We just, because we use the 2 pi divided by T very common in physics and mathematics, okay? And lastly, this whole thing is called the harmonic or phase angle form, phase angle form of the Fourier series, phase angle form, okay? And the N omega is called the N harmonic. Okay, so this is just basically an introduction to the, to the harmonic or phase angle form of a Fourier series because later we're going to use that when we talk about the amplitude spectrum.